Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Friday, December 4th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here is a look at what's coming up tonight. Tonight, the landlord to Farouk's residence opened the door and was rushed by a camera-toting group. Then, Hillary says rape victims should be believed, but here are her thoughts about those who accused her husband of sexual assault. Well, I would say that everybody should be believed at first until they are disbelieved based on evidence. After that, migrants in Macedonia display an open or die sign at the border. And the administration that gave arms to cartels and Al-Qaeda demands more gun control. That's next. From my cold, dead hand, you sons of you got that? You're not getting our firearms. Do you understand? This far and no further with your damn dictatorship. I'm sick of it. Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water, pairing the unprecedented superfiltration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell. It removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants, and hormones. Filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons, stainless steel construction, easy assembly, low maintenance, replacement filters are simple to install. And now, as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer, you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping. This is a limited time offer, so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off. Go to InfoWarsStore.com or call 888-253-3139. I think we will eventually get some indication on what that dispute was about. Uh, this was a holiday party. Uh, maybe it was called a Christmas party. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's it, so many potential triggers here. It's really unclear. That's right. There's all sorts of triggers here in the United States for people who practice an extremist ideology. That's the issue with inviting a lot of people into your country who do not wish to assimilate to your customs there as if a Christmas party uh, being offended by a Christmas party could be some sort of a justification for this massacre that took place. Now, he wasn't the only one to allude to these triggers that sort of set this guy off. There was also a criminologist, Casey Jordan, who was speaking with CNN's Don Lemon. She also alluded to the fact that he could have been offended by a Christmas party. And uh, she really went on to suggest that his motive may have also been a personal grudge and that his actions were deliberately planned so it would make it look like it was a terrorist attack, but that it wasn't really his motivations were more of a personal grudge. And, you know, of course, she doesn't really justify how the guy had 6000 rounds of ammo in his house. And, of course, his uh, bomb making factory sitting there on standby, according to authorities, you know, calling it a grudge is a bit of a stretch. And also here, that's the issue with, um, you know, not wanting to offend people as we have reported yesterday about neighbors who failed to report suspicious activity because they didn't want to appear racist. OK, so you see something, say something as long as, you know, you might not be called a racist for doing so. Now, we know that there must have been some degree of planning because the San Bernardino killers erased their digital presence a day before the attacks. According to law enforcement, they deleted email accounts, they disposed of hard drives and they smashed their cell phones. In addition to that, the San Bernardino uh, the wife pledged allegiance to ISIS on Facebook. They say that they think it actually occurred while the massacre was happening. The female shooter, Tashfeen Malik, posted a pledge of allegiance to the ISIS leader on her Facebook account. Now, this was actually a, an account with a different name, uh, and they didn't really go into how they knew that she had made this post. And Facebook actually sent out uh, a message as well, saying that, that she had made another pledge to ISIS on a post that had been deleted beforehand. So there you go. Not a personal grudge there. They are calling this now, treating it like a terror attack. But you know what? It's Christmas that's so offensive. And this is sort of the war on Christmas. We've been seeing it. You know, it ties right into this. Now universities have also deemed Secret Santa, mistletoe, and the colors red and green to be offensive. So, you know, 
just like we saw in California, they did, they canceled the Christmas tree lighting ceremony uh, there in San Bernardino. They're also now saying that don't even have red and green in your you know holiday celebrations. Make sure it's not a Christmas party in disguise because it could be seen as politically incorrect. And in fact, you're not even allowed to say politically incorrect now. That that too is seen as a microaggression. This is according to the University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. They say using it as a pejorative term, politically incorrect, is a microaggression. So there you go. I mean, there could be triggered, you could trigger jihadist attacks all over the country just for saying politically incorrect or Christmas or something. So Orwell would be so proud. Now, let's take a look at the extreme lunacy of the state of journalism here in this country today. This is what happened earlier today. Journalists stormed the San Bernardino shooter's apartment after the landlord pried open uh, the door. He said that he was going to let them in, but then they just rushed the apartment. These were news outlets, including MSNBC, BBC, CBS News and CNN. They were broadcasting live scenes from reporters just rummaging through the house. Um, they were posting people's social security cards. There were driver's licenses. There were private photographs from people that they have no relation to this terrorist attack. Um, they, in one such instance, there was uh, the name, address, and physical description of a person, sensitive information. Um, there were legal documents belonging to someone who wasn't even a suspect in this attack. And so, of course, this is going to be, there's going to be some privacy complaints issued here. Um, of course, you know, we could have family members now being harassed. So this is quite dangerous. And Kurt Nimmo points out that this is a really bizarre tour of a crime scene that uh, just days earlier, the FBI declared that this was an active crime scene. And so now the FBI is allowing journalists and apparently even some random neighbors to just rummage through this active crime scene. So that is really quite odd. And basically the... <laughs> You can congratulate Farouk's family now for a slam dunk lawsuit against the media. Of course, there's going to be all sorts of issues, tampering with evidence, possibility, inadmissibility in court, uh, things like that. But also there could potentially be some violent harassment coming the way of uh, people who saw that woman's driver's license. It was apparently um, the shooter's mother. It had her home address and description and everything right there on the live broadcast so way to go, MSNBC. And we have Obama, Obama's attorney general saying she's going to go ahead and prosecute any actions that lead to violence. So she might want to aim that toward MSNBC, who broadcasted that lady's driver's license there on the news. Um, this is uh, Loretta Lynch. She says violent language directed at Muslims is unacceptable and she will uh, be make sure that they're prosecuted. So she didn't really clarify what actions predicated on violent talk and didn't draw a line between constitutionally protected free speech and violence. Uh, so here we are seeing, she was speaking in front of a, um, a Muslim group there and basically pushing the fact that they're gonna use this social justice agenda at the expense of the constitution. So once again, you know, this is the United States, we go by the constitutional law, not Sharia law. So. Uh, of course, this is also underscoring this collectivist idea that the government somehow has the authority to protect the rights of a group rather than the rights of the individual. And even though we saw the total failure of gun control laws there in California, which of course has some of the strictest gun laws in the country, total failure, Obama is gonna double down on gun control because it doesn't work. Even though the White House has admitted that such a law will have absolutely have done nothing to prevent this week's San Bernardino shooting. So this is sort of the liberal logic. Just if if it's broke, just keep on doing the same thing. I think that they also say that that's a sign of insanity. And then, of course, Hillary Clinton tweets this out too, basically tying a Republican senator saying that they're responsible for these terrorist attacks. If you are too dangerous to fly in America, you're too dangerous to buy a gun in America. Now, let's point out the fact that tens of thousands of people are incorrectly on the no-fly list and they are basically guilty until proven innocent. And so now I guess we're putting the TSA in charge of doling out our rights. So that's quite bizarre. And uh, you know, also let's not forget the fact that there are about what 75 TSA agents themselves who are on the no-fly list. 
So yeah, that makes a lot of sense there. So doubling down on the gun grabbing and also doubling down on the open borders and don't be racist, bring in all these Syrian refugees because maybe they may be terrorists, they might not be. Meanwhile, you see uh, some Muslim migrants displaying open or die. They have are holding up a banner at the Macedonian border saying open the borders or die and they're attacking police. So this is the type of thing that we are supposed to just be welcoming here in the country with open arms. Attorney General Loretta Lynch said Thursday at the Muslim Advocates 10th anniversary dinner, she will take aggressive action against the incredibly disturbing rise of anti-Muslim rhetoric. Actions predicated on violent talk are not America. They are not who we are, they're not what we do, and they will be prosecuted. Lynch did not clarify what actions predicated on violent talk means and did not draw a line between constitutionally protected free speech and violence. She also did not pinpoint individuals or groups she believes participate in violent talk. Judge Andrew P. Napolitano notes the willingness alone to use violence is not criminal. It is only the actual use of violence that is. Thus, it is the manifestation of hatred as lawless violence that may be prosecuted. But the manifestation of hatred as a unifying idea is protected and may not be prosecuted. The First Amendment absolutely bars the government from interference from a person's thoughts or associations prior to any violent activity. Lynch's recent grandstanding before a Muslim group reveals the Justice Department and the Obama administration are promoting the so-called social justice agenda at the expense of the Constitution and the First Amendment. It also underscores the collectivist idea that government has the authority, enforced by its monopoly of coercion and violence, to protect the rights of preferred groups at the expense of the rights of the individual. Meanwhile, the female shooter in San Bernardino posted her allegiance to ISIS on Facebook, while Obama constantly inappropriately takes jabs at the Christian faith. Remember that during the Crusades and the Inquisition, people committed terrible deeds in the name of Christ. Less than loving expressions by Christians? I get concerned. That's right. Let's criticize Christianity on Easter, you piece of crap. That's a topic for another day. Why are we supposed to be politically correct while our traditions, rights, country, and very lives are increasingly threatened on a daily basis? State your name. I, Loretta Elizabeth Lynch. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support and defend. That I will support and defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith. That I will bear true faith. And allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. That I take this obligation freely. That I take this obligation freely. Without any mental reservation. Without any mental reservation. Or purpose of evasion. Or purpose of evasion. That I will well and faithfully discharge. That I will well and faithfully discharge. The duties of the office. The duties of the office. On which I am about to enter. Of which I am about to enter. So help me God. Attorney General Loretta Lynch, you do remember swearing in on Frederick Douglass's Christian Bible at your request. You do know it was Frederick Douglass who famously said, I would unite with anybody to do right and with nobody to do wrong. The protection of religious freedom is the cornerstone of American society. And of course, not all Muslims are hell bent on jihad, but it turns out a percentage of them are. And those psychopaths are in the United States and mixed in with the refugees streaming in as I speak. And they have no clue what American civil rights are, nor do they care. Maybe no, 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 no. Hey, li listen, you're in my house. No, President Obama, this is our house. John Bound for Infowars.com. And joining me now is David Knight. Now, David, coming up after the break, you're going to be speaking with the attorney of a man.